So this is sort of a new concept. And really, there are a number of vendors in the marketplace right now providing these XDS repositories. The really nice thing about this is that there is a, nat a national health information exchange, uh, it, basically this NHIN program, which is really keeping the standards around this information very tightly controlled. And so it is, uh, you know, where we have run into it so far, it has been relatively easy to write to, read from, and the information has been relatively you know, discreet and where we need it to be. So this has been a pretty successful from, uh, from a lot of different angles. Uh, current places that are, uh, are, are, uh, are, are enabling this, um, we have, you know, in, in uh, Portland, Oregon, they've got a healthcare exchange locally at a hospital system. Uh, there's another one in Virginia. Uh, there are, you, know, you may have heard the term RIO, or regional health exchanges. So this is the central, uh, this is the central technology behind a lot of these health uh, exchanges. And those are going on in almost every state. We were in New Mexico just recently, and we're talking about the XDS repository that's made up by the state is already covering more than 700,000 people that is uh, out of a total population of 2 million people in terms of the, of the currently accessible information. Information is limited in that system at the current time, but it's expanding. So these are, these are the kinds of things our customers are reporting to us as really, you know, there's, there's more infrastructure here than there used to be. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the protocols that you might have. Um, a protocol for the repository, there's also something called a registry. So the XDS repository, there's also this thing called an XDS registry. The XDS registry basically tracks what documents are available in the repository. So I can check with this XDS registry and say, what do I have? That's sort of the workflow of it. What's really neat about this is it doesn't only track what's going on in the main repository, but it can track what's going on outside in other registries and repositories as well. So you can imagine, in this situation I presented to the emergency department, I don't have a lot of data. I've asked the registry for documents. I get the documents I've got, but the registry is also able to reach out and say, well, what's in the New Mexico exchange? What do I have out here? So if this was a local hospital-based exchange in New Mexico, and then it reaches out to the New Mexico Health Exchange and says, is there any other information? Now I'm getting back, well, actually, this patient is actually taken care of at another hospital system. And I have a world of discharge instructions, EKGs, pre-hospital records, and all kinds of other information. And so comes rolling in a lot of information. Obviously, big privacy concerns around this. You know, there's a lot of concern about what happens when a patient comes in and who has access to all this information because there can be a lot of it. So this is where a lot of the IHE protocols come in. There's a whole set of logging and, uh, and, and basically reporting requirements around this. Those are, are referred to um, as Aetna. I'm going to probably misspell this. Uh, it's actually, I think, just ATNA. But uh, basically what it does is it allows for, at any time when anyone's checking in, it allows for validation and some security around this so that you have, you know, it, you know, the emergency room physician clearly needs this information, isn't perhaps able to get full, uh, full uh, sign off on it, is essentially implying a sort of um, uh, implied emergent consent to the information. So how we access all of this is appropriately log and track your Aetna. So there is a lot of privacy around this. There's a lot of security around this, even more probably than a lot of the, uh, the, lot of the EDI transactions that have happened in the past. So this is something that you know, we regard as a really great go-forward strategy for coupling these systems together. Let me talk just a little bit about the way this actually works inside of the emergency department product from PISIS, the pulse check product, so that we can talk a little bit about in a real world example, in a real world health system, how would this all work together? So Pulse Check is the emergency department module from PISIS. So there is a customer of ours that will remain nameless for the present that is out in the Pacific Northwest um, that has a very large outpatient system. And that outpatient system is from vendor A, okay, and is acquiring, you know, five or six hundred thousand records on patients per year. And it's an important contributor to the main hospital system. 
they have an overall hospital information. I'm going to draw this up here. They have a hospital information system, and that hospital information system has all of those covered lives whenever they present to the hospital. So very important that the information comes into the hospital information system, and we run all their emergency departments. So in this situation, they have an exchange that was actually purchased from vendor A. And right now, the information is is passed from vendor A into the exchange every time a patient is registered out here. They update all the medications and allergies. Now, one of the things that our, our, our customer actually helped us with when we were starting to build this is we wanted, particularly in an emergency department where things are very busy and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of confusion and potentially multiple patients coming in with even the same last name sometimes. This is the kind of thing where we want no dumb questions for the clinicians, is the bottom line. No dumb questions for the patients, of course, but even for the clinicians. So what happens when this patient presents to the emergency department is that when you go to say, I'm going to enter the allergies in the system. We don't have a button there that says, you know, do you want to go look for the information? We know the clinicians want all of the information. So when we go to that screen, we automatically look here. We present a list of all the allergies, all the allergies from this system, all the allergies that we might know in the past, and all the information for the, from the repository so that they're presented with one integrated streamline already organized list that says this is what we know about the patient. Imagine that from the patient's point of view. You would go from your physician's office complaining of right lower quadrant abdominal pain that looks like it might be an appendicitis. At that point you arrive in the emergency department and instead of the usual what are you allergic to, it's here are six things that we know you're allergic to. Is there anything else or is any of this information not valid? You review it and in a matter of seconds, you have an updated record. That information is then passed back to the repository at the time, and that way they have the most updated list. So here in this situation, the operating room system is actually part of the HIS. So I see you in the emergency department, and I'm going to administer some medications. When I go to medication orders, I'm presented with that same accurate list that was compiled from the clinical information from the emergency department uh, nurse but usual, but also it has, been, it has been in a clean and streamlined way organized from all the information from the different systems. So when I go to order a medication, I can be sure that there's nothing hiding, there's no source of information that hasn't been considered when I'm getting ready to give those medications. When I transfer that patient up to the operating room, the patient arrives in the operating room to have their appendicitis, all that information has gone up there. Now, there are a whole list of other documents that I might need. Previous surgical reports. I might want to know all of the previous cardiac catheterizations. If you have had a cardiac catheterization, having the result of that is going to be really important for the operating room visit. It's also going to be important in what I do in the emergency department for your care. So we also have the ability to show a list. And so what will happen in our system is, the medications and allergies, which are critically embedded in the workflow, all that stuff will be automatically on all the menus for the nurses. But there's also an area where I can look at and say, OK, this is the list of other documents, for Dr. Crockett, that you might want to consider as relevant to this case. And I would say, I want to see that, load up the document, and all of that information is coming in from that exchange. So now, very much you know, as if it was all one system. Not only don't I have to ask the patient any dumb questions, I don't have to call up the doctors and ask any dumb questions because they have nicely contributed to this exchange. So the combination of the document display and the medications actually integrated right into the workflow creates a transition of care that is seamless. It provides all the clinicians all the important pieces of information that they should have when they're doing this. And we're starting to act like, I believe, our clients, our patients, really feel like we should be acting in a modern healthcare system. For more information on Healthcare Information Exchange, uh, PISIS products, and information about uh, how we integrate with this, uh, our progress uh, in implementing the IAG protocols in Healthcare Information Exchange, and my progress in handwriting lessons, which you can see are sorely needed here, please feel free to refer to the PISIS website at www.pisis.com, P-I-C-I-S.
Thank you very much.